this module talks about the inspection regulations that we uh, have to know to inspect light duty trailers, uh, medium duty vehicles, uh, emissions control devices, and also emissions waivers, as well as the OBD2 portion of the New York State inspection. So let's start with trailers. Trailers is pretty easy. Um, when you inspect a trailer, uh, obviously it's a safety only check that's performed. Um, we use the section that we've already talked about, 79.21, but we only use certain sections of 79.21. We use section A, which talks about brakes, section C, which is tires, section D, 3, 4, and 6, which are springs, chassis, and shock absorbers, and lastly, section E, which is lighting and reflectors. All of the laws and procedures that you've learned in these sections apply directly to trailers. Um, and, and the types of trailers you'll probably be inspecting are, are light duty trailers, trailers under 10,000 uh, pounds maximum gross weight, for instance, uh, boat trailers and uh, little box trailers, uh, maybe um, landscaping trailers and, and those types of things. Uh, the only thing we have to add to it is the hitching system. So we're not worried about the hitching system on the vehicle. That's not part of inspection. But what we're looking at is the hitching system of the trailer itself. So we're rejecting the vehicle. Um, if, if there's any broken uh, or missing bolts, any broken welds, um, or any looseness in the hitch system. Let's move on to medium duty vehicles. Um, medium duty vehicles are defined as vehicles that are between 10,000 and one pound, all the way up to 18,000 pounds. Um, as a group one inspector, you're gonna be able to inspect vehicles all the way up to 18,000 pounds but the rules and regulations change a little bit if it's under 10,000 pounds versus if it's over 10,000 pounds. Um, so let's look at some of the differences. Uh, first of all, the tires, as we learned um, in, already uh, in uh, Group 1 inspections, um, the tires on vehicles under 10,000 pounds had to be at least 2 30 seconds of an inch. Anything over 10,000 pounds, the tires must be at least 4 30 seconds of an inch, measured at the two thinnest points on the tire. The brake equalization test is performed twice on a vehicle over 10,000 pounds. It's performed before and after a wheel is pulled. And on a medium duty vehicle, um, you have to remove one wheel from the rearmost axle that contains brakes, unless the backing plate is designed to allow inspection of the drum and lining thickness. Um, and at that case, you don't have to do the second brake equalization test. Um, so the difference between anything under 10,000 pounds is under 10,000 uh, pounds, one front wheel was required to be removed. Um, over 10,000 pounds, you have to remove at least one rear wheel from the rearmost axle um, that contains brake. And we reject if there's missing or inoperative brakes at any wheels unless it's a 1980 vehicle with three or more axles and does not have front brakes. So that's kind of unique. I've never seen it um, in the dealerships that I've worked at. Obviously, we're working on a little bit newer things there. Uh, the difference also with uh, the brake linings with a medium-duty vehicle is that bonded drum brake linings uh, must be at least eighth of an inch thick. Um, if you remember back to uh, light duty vehicles, the spec was 16th of an inch, so twice as thick, you go all the way up to an eighth of an inch. And riveted uh, drum brake linings, uh, we reject if the thinnest point is less than 1 seconds of an inch above the rivet, if the bolt head of the rivet is uh, greater than 3 eighths of an inch, um, if it's, I'm sorry, less than 3 eighths of an inch, we reject it if the the thinnest point is less than 5 sixteenths when it's measured uh, in the center if it doesn't um, have that bolt head thickness. So we also reject if the drums and rotors have elongated mounting holes. In other words, where they go on, um, if that rotor or drum has been slamming around and uh, kind of ovaled out the holes that slide over the studs, we would fail. Now this is something we don't talk about too much in our uh, in our program, 
but you may run into a vehicle that's a medium duty vehicle up to 18,000 pounds that has air brakes. Um, so there's a, a lot of checks that have to be performed on page 52 and 53 of your regulation manual. I would take the time to read and um, do additional research to understand what all the terms and, and um, um, components that they're explaining in there. Um, again, we haven't prepared you for uh, air brakes because our, our program uh, that you're involved in is typically light duty vehicles. Um, but we have to check, check the air brakes and breakaway systems on vehicles that have them up to 18,000 pounds. If there's coupling devices on the vehicle, um, we also have to check the pintle drawbar air, uh, the drawbar eye, and the safety chains if they're equipped. On a medium duty vehicle, um, we reject the vehicle if the exhaust noise is appreciably greater than the mechanical noise of fans and valves. So it sounds uh, a little bit subjective there, but it's designed to be you're the inspector, you decide if the exhaust is, um, is too loud. If there's any excessive vibration of the exhaust line, if there's any exhaust leak from the manifold all the way to the tailpipe, and if the exhaust system does not discharge to the rear of the cab, all of these are reasons to reject a, a vehicle that's a medium duty vehicle. All right, let's switch gears and talk about the emission uh, components. So the next section of the uh, inspection is the emission control device uh, inspection. This applies to all vehicles under 18,000 pounds. Um, so again, up to this point, all we've done is safety checks. We did them on light duty. We've done them on heavy duty. Um, we also have done them on trailers. Switching gears to the emission control. Um, here are the things under 8,500 pounds that must be checked. We have to ensure that these parts are there and intact. So this is 25 years old and newer, 8,500 pounds or less. We have to make sure um, that the po uh, positive crankcase ventilation valve is there, the PCV valve. We have to ensure the catalytic converter is present. Again, it doesn't have to work. We don't have to verify that it works. We just have to verify that it's there. That the fuel inlet restrictor is there. The EGR valve, if it has one, the thermostatic air cleaner, if it's equipped with it, uh, secondary air or air in injection system. The EVAP system and all the parts uh, involved with that, as well as the gas cap, if, it's, if it uh, has a gas cap. So let's talk about this real quick. So the PCV valve you'll find on pretty much every vehicle. We have to make sure that that thing is plugged in. Typically, you find it in the valve cover uh, or the hosing leading up to the valve cover. Catalytic converter. This can sometimes be difficult because uh, there are times where there's multiple cats or there's resonators on cars that sometimes can be confused with catalytic converters. But again, your job is to know the vehicles that you're inspecting well enough to be able to identify whether the catalytic converter is there. Uh, the fuel inlet restrict in Fuel inlet restrictor is not the little flapper door uh, that you sometimes have open uh, when you fill it with fuel. It's actually the wall that restricts down the size of the nozzle that can go into uh, the fuel uh, the fuel tube, fuel filler tube. EGR valve, not all vehicles have them, uh, but again, if the vehicle is supposed to have it, it needs to be there. Thermostatic air cleaner, we're usually talking about older cars. Um, th the thermostatic air cleaner has to be present as well as the uh, piping that goes to them. Air injection system, same thing. Not all cars have it, but if it has secondary air, that pump has to be there as well as uh, the parts and hoses leading up to it. And EVAP, which can include an evaporative canister, a purge solenoid, um, the canister closed valve, the fuel tank, all that has to be there. The gas cap, we have to verify that it's there. And if it is there, we have to verify that it's not broken or cracked. Uh, be aware that uh, some vehicles nowadays are capless. And so when you go to the CVIS station, uh, it's going to ask you about the gas cap, and you have to choose whether it's missing, broken, cracked, capless, or there. All right, OBD2 um, check. This is the part of the inspection where we're at the CVIS machine, and we actually plug into the vehicle's OBD2 connector to see if the emission monitors have run and passed. 
Again, this applies to vehicles 8,500 in pounds or lower. Uh, 1996 in newer vehicles that are gas powered or diesel. 1997 in newer vehicles that are under 8,500 pounds. We reject the, the vehicle if the malfunction indicator lamp, the check engine light, does not come on with the key turned on. Uh, we reject it if the, the check engine light does not go off when the engine's running. If the CVIS is unable to communicate with the OBD2 computer, it also fails. And if there's too many monitors that are not ready, that would fail New York State inspection. Now, what can cause monitors to not be ready is um, a monitor that keeps failing or possibly a battery that has gone dead, a computer that has been uh, replaced or unplugged where the memory of the computer has, uh, has been removed. Um, you run into this a lot working on cars. So when you're working on cars that are in the shop for a New York State inspection, you have to be very careful not to disconnect the battery until after you inspect the car. If you do erase the emissions monitors, um, the vehicle has to be driven in certain criteria to get the monitors to run and pass. Um, the spec for it is uh, 2000 is allowed to have uh, one 2000 older, so 96 to 2000 is allowed to have one, I'm sorry, two emission monitors that have not run. So all of them need to have run except for two. Uh, 2001 and newer, all of the emission monitors have to have run, run except you're allowed to have one that has not run and passed. Um, again, the machine will, will clearly call that out. Uh, let's talk about the emissions waiver. Uh, the emissions waiver is a waiver that can be issued to a customer if emission control devices are there but not working. So here's the three criteria to issue an emissions waiver. So if the vehicle safety inspection has been passed, if all the emission control devices have passed, um, and by the way, uh, the cost for replacement of missing components missing emissions control devices or safety items does not count towards the waiver cost limits. And you might wonder what this cost is. Um, a customer has to spend at least $450 in parts and labor um, in order to be eligible for an emissions waiver. And again, this is not to replace a part that's not there. If a catalytic converter fell off and a customer comes in for an inspection without that converter on the car, the $450 does not include the cost to put that catalytic converter on. But if it has a catalytic converter on and it's not working, so in other words, the check engine light's on, as soon as that customer spends a $450 in parts and labor, they are eligible for a waiver, which uh, allows that car to pass New York State inspection for that year.